composing, being one pointed here and now, just these words are not commands or imperatives, but just suggestions. And then, you know, want to, what should I do first? Anapanasati, sound of silence, or sweeping the body, or metapavana. What should, tell me what to do first. I want somebody to tell me the right way to do it. And watch that, and that tendency to expect or want somebody else to tell you to direct your practice. So this is like you're beginning to recognize self and listen to it. You're not saying there's anything wrong, but it's just like this. The confusion, when you've got choices or options, or is like this. So some people like very strong techniques and strong teachers that tell you every movement to make. Why? Because then you feel secure, you know, the, the master, the expert tells you what to do. So you always, you see yourself as somebody that doesn't know what to do and gets confused by options, choices, or explanations. So this is like being aware of this feeling of being somebody that doesn't know or uncertain or so wants clarity and assurance from external sources. Now this is, this is, this is, uh, bring this to attention, it's like this. So I, confusion, mental confusion, being insecure is like this. And when I say it's like this, I'm noticing. Right now I don't feel insecure or confused, so I, it's just a kind of <laughs> example. But I have certainly been through it. And confusion, dullness, uncertainty, self-doubt, and you know, Chaos, mental chaos, uh, even madness. <coughs> so then this, and like being confused or dull or unclear, you know, is we resist it. You know, at least this is what I do used to do. And when I feel confused or uncertain, <coughs> insecure, that I. I want certainty, I want clarity, I want to get rid of confusion. I don't like feeling insecure, I want to feel safe and secure. I want clear directions, clear explanations. They clarify everything and answer the questions and solve all the problems. But even with the best answers and the best solutions and the best explanations, if you don't break through the basic delusion, you know, even intellectual clarity and, and rational intelligence and all that still leads to confusion. You end up not being quite certain. There's other, it could be like this, could be like that. <clears throat> you can always quote scriptures. I've seen monks quote scriptures to prove their particular points. They say, this is the words of the Buddha, so it's got to be true. It's in the Majjhima Nikaya. So the usual controversy that seems to go on around the Paticca Samuppada, the dependent origin, is it three lives explanation or simultaneous arising? And this can get really heated with bhikkhus. Almost the point of, you know, fisticuffs. <laughs> so last time I was in Sri Lanka, I went, they took me to the forest hermitage up in Kandy, where Yanaponika used to live. And 
then the Bunyana Ponika used to live there, and then and they went just for a visit, a day visit. So I went in this uh, forest hermitage, and and there were a group of Western monks waiting there, and one one looked really, you know, he had dark kind of aura about him, gloomy, like a black cloud hanging around him. <laughs> young, young monk, uh, and, you know, really didn't want to get too close to that one. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, sat down and we talked, uh, talked with the other monks and very pleasant uh, convivial atmosphere. And, and then I, then we said, well, it's time to go, we have to uh, go back to Colombo. Uh, so I said, well, before I go back, I, I'd like to go to the toilet. Where is the, the bathroom? So, so I, the one monk pointed to the toilet. And I got up, and this is walking towards the toilet. This young, gloomy, dark monk comes up to me, and he, he looks at me with this intense look and anger, and he says, You've got it wrong. You've got it wrong. But teacher Samupada is three life theories. It's not simultaneous arising. Yelling at me like that. And it's such intensity and lack of mindfulness. So I said, this is not the time to discuss dependent origination. <laughs> You don't, you don't discuss this <laughs> profound subject when you're on your way to the toilet. <laughs> so, you know, is, you know, most of you probably don't know very much about dependent origination. <laughs> you know, you, is it three lives or simultaneous? Is it in the moment? Or and then one thinks about it. You know, you're caught in the in the in the words, and maybe you prefer one interpretation over another. And then you look it up in the scriptures, and I've heard both versions proved by scriptural quotations. So which one is, 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 are both right, or one's right and one's wrong, or you get confused, don't you? I want certitude. I want to know that this one interpretation is right, and I want to make pronouncements to Buddhist world Buddhism that the simultaneous arising theory is heretical, and wrong, and anyone who teaches simultaneous Arya interdependent origination is no longer Buddhist. He's a heretic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's how the thinking mind goes when you attach to one side, one view, isn't it? So the thing, you know, the, uh, what I'm pointing at is of being aware of this, of wanting. Of of, in, of preferring one interpretation over another, having wanting a, a kind of uh, you know a council to announce what is pure Buddhism and what is false, what is right, what is wrong. Now this kind of mental state is a thinking process, isn't it? My ego, you know, I, I want to be right. You know, I I want to be right. Uh, it's you know, uh, my ego feeling good about myself depends on me being right. <laughs> if I go around thinking I'm wrong all the time, I just get depressed. No, I'm wrong. I'm always wrong. <laughs> Don't ever trust me because I'm wrong all the time. Or you know, then I become you know, then go like. That monk's a real, you know, he needs the psychiatric help. <laughs> He's a basket case. Or I'm right, my view, my interpretation, the way I do it is right, and 
the way that one does it is wrong. Don't trust that one either. So this is where you, awareness is like the floodlight. It becomes aware of of this need and desire to be right, to to figure everything out and define and answer questions and solve problems. And this awareness, aware of that, desire to become, desire to get something or get rid of something. So then not knowing, not being sure, what's that like? Not being certain, doubting. And one, there's awareness of that, you know, the, where like this, not feeling insecure and not knowing the answers is like this. Now when I, when I reflect in this way, I'm, I'm bringing attention to, to my mental state right now, feeling of uncertainty, not knowing. Now that is and that awareness of uncertainty. And so this pointing of uh, clarity is through awareness, not through making uh, arbitrary decisions about what's right and wrong and orthodox or heretical or who's right and who who isn't and what is true and what is false. That's that's a intellectual function. And and so it just it goes around and around and you can't really trust it in term for liberation. It has its uses, but it is not liberating at all. So then you uh, the Buddha emphasized awareness, mindfulness, upamado amatapadang. Mindfulness is the way is the way to the deathless. Well, I can be mindful. I can be aware of con- of feeling confused or feeling uncertain or doubting is like this. And in this way, then I I'm accepting this state. You know, I'm not resisting it or making judgment, but I'm I'm allowing my uh, this this mood this confused uncertainty to be like this. But the stability lies in awareness, not in in getting rid of confusion. Because confusion is a another condition, it arises and ceases. And so if you're patient with feeling confused, uncertain, and so forth, it's you can witness yourself, its presence and its absence. So in, like, in <clears throat> when I, when I sit in like this and made what we call meditation, or, I just, uh, you know, I bring uh, attention, I compose, I kind of bring attention, aware of, say, what kind of mood, what state of mind uh, is it right now? I listen to the sound of silence. Then I can, then from there, you kind of, you're developing this awareness on this wide, you know, this wide spectrum. It's like switching on the floodlight. You're switching on the light so you can see. Rather than fumbling around in the dark. (laughs) So then you, then, you know, it may be mindfulness of the breath or awareness of the sensation of the body, but this is more intuitive rather than prescriptive. Because I used to be very prescriptive. They first do 15 minutes of anapanasati, mindfulness of the breath at the nostril, 
at least 15, 20 minutes and then do Vipassana. Mm. And then, you know, give, give uh, prescriptions. What, you do this first, this is A, then B. But this tends to f- be following orders and, uh, you know, following what others tell you. you know, the real point, the real essence of Buddhist, Buddha Dhamma is awakening. <coughs> you know, being awake, switching on the floodlight, seeing, not in, <coughs> in getting this state and then go on to the next state and you get into... You know, you've got to do this first before you can go to that. And that, because that's the thinking mind. <coughs> the thinking mind is hierarchical structures. You have to have A before B. You can't have A and B in one moment. The thinking, you, have, you can't say A and B at the same moment. One has to go first. You can say B A or A B. <laughs> this is obvious, isn't it? <coughs> but I can be aware of A B at the same moment if it's awareness. And so, like awareness. Is, is then the, is is the deathless, the unconditioned. This is it. There's nothing more. And then the self is the sense of myself as a person. I begin to be aware. Of, I am this monk who's practicing uh, intense meditation in order to become enlightened in the future. I can be aware of the the suppositions or the conventions, the conventional thoughts and identities. Not to, you know, just to see them in, in the light, their condition. Sape Sankarani Cha. All conditions are impermanent. So, Sakya Ditti, or the first fetter, is a, it's all about thinking, identity with memory, with the body, my body, my opinion my practice <coughs> I've got to do something now to become something I desire in the future now intentionally thinking it out like this <coughs> more and more the the awareness of your thinking you begin, you know if you really pursue this you it, it separates you begin to see awareness recognize you can't see awareness as an object. You are aware. You recognize this is awareness, and then the thinking process can be, you know, skillfully used or not. You know, it's up. You know, it's more from wisdom then, rather than just habitual thinking and attachments to views and opinions. So now it just encourages uh, this sen- this. Uh, the sense of awakened attention. So even when you're aware of the breath, you're aware of uh, breathing, anapanasati. <coughs> Putting your attention onto the f- breathing function, say at the nostril, inhaling, exhaling. The awareness of breathing isn't breathing, is it? It's obvious. Breathing is like this. The awareness that allows you to reflect and observe the inhalation, exhalation. Well, awareness of thinking. Awareness means you can be aware of thinking rather than thinking about awareness. You never get anywhere thinking about awareness. You get confused <laughs> thinking about yourself we create ourselves with thoughts just my name Ajahn Sumedho that's a creation that's not a natural condition 
you know, it's, it is what it is, a condition, and I, and I can, you know, observe my name, thinking my name, Ajahn Tomato, <coughs> then recognizing that this awareness is not, doesn't have any name. It isn't named, it's not, awareness is not Ajahn Tomato. But awareness is, is, is awake, it's alert, it's clear, it's, uh, uh, you know, but it's not, doesn't have a name, doesn't belong to, to Ajahn Sumedho or anyone else. It is like this, recognized, and, it, and, it, and we're able to recognize, we're able to see the changing conditions from this perspective. The thinking process, emotional habits, uh, cultural conditioning, attitudes, assumptions. We all have assumptions we make from our cultural background and that, you know, we just, we never question them. And as you trust the awareness, then you can be aware of just, you know, cultural biases or assumptions or that, that maybe you've never, never been fully conscious of, but you just, you know, you just, they, they're just part of the way you interpret experience. So like uh, an emotion, like anger arises, I can be aware of, of this feeling, this, this energy called, that we call anger. It's like being aware of the breath. It's like awareness of the breath doesn't, the awareness isn't breathing. Is it, you know, but awareness is allowing, uh, observe, witness the breathing, which the body's doing. Awareness allows us to see the, the energetic, uh, the quality of anger when it when it arises and 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 is present in consciousness, but awareness is not anger, it's not angry, is not greedy, is not confused. It's clear, clear. It's clarity. You know, seeing clear, clear comprehension. Sati sampachanya. Now when we chanted the salutation of the triple gem, this this is a beautiful reflection. It has the you know the five khandas and and all this. It's got when we chant, you know chanting this every day really has a you know the at first when I first started chanting in Thailand. You know then 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 it translated into Thai. Uh, I had to learn Thai. And at first, I didn't know Thai or Pali. So just I just learned to memorize. I have good memory. Mem I'm good at memorizations. I can chant all these things without understanding anything I'm saying. <laughs> but but then so you know my my American mind thought this is this is a waste of time. You're just memorizing this, and and it's just, and it, and I remember we were never encouraged to wrote, memorize very much, in in uh, in my school days, you know we memorized a few poems and that, but it's never um, kind of. In fact, I thought I got the impression that it wasn't good for you to wrote memorize. To memorize by rote, so I never you know didn't have a lot of experience with uh, memorizing and then uh, becoming a bhikkhu and chanting had to memorize Pali chants and then Padimokha uh, which is the 227 monastic rules which this morning we will this is the full moon day of September and so at nine o'clock, we 
the we'll assemble in the temple <laughs> and one monk will chant the whole 227 rules in Pali. And Venerable Ahing Sakto is very good at this. He's the fastest, he can do it faster than anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know you go it sounds like you know like you're almost like a, you're auctioning off tobacco you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so I used to be critical of this it's like you know I, you know when I first heard it you know I was impressed by the fact that a monk could sit there and recite 227 rule takes about 40 minutes to, at least and then and and just going on you know 227 rules in the Pali, Pali language you know I've never done anything like that before so I thought I won't be bothered but I'm a real meditator I'm just here to meditate I'm not going to do that waste of time this is my grumpy way because you know I couldn't see the point of it if you don't know what you're saying why say it you just learn it. chanting in a language you don't understand you know doesn't seem reasonable and I went on and that for a while you know complaining and and uh, putting it down but eventually learned to do it <laughs> and, then, and now I find after all these years you know of the, the, these words, uh, you know, in the, and the Dhamma teachings in Pali, suddenly they, you know, even though at first they were memorized, maybe and you didn't understand the meaning, but then as you have insight and practice, then suddenly all these words start, you understand them, not just English translations, but you really understand in a, in a, it's insight knowledge, it's not just intellectual uh, thinking anymore. You know, like like when you talk about dukkha, you know, just this word dukkha, which translate, is generally translated as suffering. I know that from gut level. I know dukkha in a, not from, you know, all the different English uh, forms of suffering that you can all put under that category. I mean, it's, an, it's from an an intuitive insight, not just a, 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 a list of definitions from a, from a dictionary. So like Buddha also, the word Buddha <coughs> at first is name of, name of, the, of a great sage. And, you know, so I took it on a kind of literal level uh, from a Western mind, you know, Buddhism, Buddha, and, you know, Gautama the Buddha, the Buddha uh, that lived in India 2,550 years ago. And, uh, but then, you know, over the, through insight and that more, like Buddha, Buddha is, is awareness. You know, it's got, it's, this is still defining it. But, it's on a deeper level than just me telling you what Buddha really is. Don't believe me, you know. This is, it's just a, a word in itself, the convention. But it does, it helps you, help, you know, it's a guide to observe. This is, you know, this works for me. Buddha is the awareness, awareness of the way it is. So this is like a, a paradigm, not from the ego level of me, Ajahn Sumito, practicing Buddhist meditation, uh, and then me trying to get, uh, you know, get enlightened, uh, get Ajahn Sumito enlightened in the future, uh, and, you know, with that's the conventional way of thinking, of, you know, I am Ajahn Sumato, I practice meditation now in order to become enlightened. Or, the, then, so the, the, that I, I'm putting the subject always as, as the ego, the Sakya Ditti. I'm Ajahn Sumato, I'm practicing in order to become enlightened in the future. 
that's all thinking, I create those thoughts. Awareness of that, thinking. See, it's like pure, sub it's a pure subjectivity, pure consciousness, aware of Dhamma, the way it is. So you have this, use this, these words, not as beliefs or doctrines or anything like that, but they're just helpful to change from the cultural conditioned attitude of uh, your name and the sense of yourself as a person and your ability to practice or not practice and tr your goal in the future to this using words more skillfully, like it's a language, Dhamma language, uh, the paradigm goes from me practicing meditation to become something that I don't feel I am yet to being this awareness, being the puto, knowing, observing the way thing, the way it is. You see, so dhamma is the truth of the way it is, and that is the pay sankara anicca. All conditions are impermanent. The pay tama anatta. Let me just chanted those two in the morning. The salutation to the triple gem. The pay sankara anicca. The pay tama anatta. Now the pay tama anatta. All dhamma is is not self. The anatta is a, used in the Theravada <coughs> system very much, not which means it's translated as non self. Now that is to be reflected on, you know, what does it mean practically right now? The so Dhamma translated as the truth, the way it is right now, there's no self in it. There's no sense of a permanent uh, self-entity. You know, like a separate self. My soul, my unique soul, my view, my opinion. Is, you know, when you really, when you're with awareness, then you're seeing Dhamma rather than than being caught in all the habits about me and mine and who I am and what I have to become. So this is, you know, to be reflected on, to find out for yourself. To see, like, this word Sakya Ditti, the first fetter, the ego, the conditioned sense of oneself. So, it's Dhamma then, the the conditioned sense of self is 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 a sankara. In other words, it is it uh, you know it's thought. Ajahn Sumato is a thought arising, ceasing. When I look for Ajahn Sumato in the present, just aware there isn't any. I have to create it. I have to think I'm Ajahn Sumato. Then it he kind of comes and goes. You know, I think it, then it's gone. It's not lying latent in there somewhere, you know. I am Ajahn Sumedho kind of, you know, engraved <laughs> in my in my brain or anything. And so it's, uh, you know, but it's conventionally, you know, I use it. They, are you Ajahn Sumedho? I say yes. You know, when you're on a conventional level, if I'm being an uh, enigmatic Zen master, you say, are you Ajahn? You say, are you Ajahn? There is no Ajahn. <laughs> <laughs> and then you say, oh, wow, oh, I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> you say, I wanted to donate a million pounds to Amravati. <laughs> Oh, I, yes, I'm Ajahn. <laughs> 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 uh, reflecting, you know, seeing that, 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 and the sense of I am American British. 
this is my this is my nationality now because I have both a citizen of both countries so. or am I a British American no no yeah <laughs> Because I live in Britain, no, no, so I'm, but I'm American by birth, uh, American British, just like Pakistani British or something. Like <laughs> These are questions that this country is bringing up now, isn't it? Or what is being British? You know, I mean, that's a good question. <laughs> but the English, they don't have to say I'm English British, and they look upon calling themselves British as kind of beneath them because you can then be pure English or Scottish <coughs> and so one one develops conceit and and cultural attitude these are cultural attitudes aren't they that that we acquire from cultural conditioning but they're conventions you know they come and go and there's no essence there's no there's nothing to them they just you know ways of operating in the world but not to be bound to or believed in or to fight for or anything like that they they can be used skillfully but as identities there's nothing to them there's no essence you really look at anything you think or feel it all goes into nothing it ceases. But that which is aware, that awareness itself, sustains itself. Once I recognize it, I know it's this, it, it's self-sustaining. I don't have to hold on to it and make it do anything. Or It's just trusting it, remembering, trusting, recognizing, realizing. It's this. And then, and that then is like a, the still point of the, the the turning world. You know, it's it's it, one thing is a sense of stability with awareness, and then the then the different conditions come and go according to other conditions. There's nothing permanent or you know substantial or. Uh, an essence that that is permanent. The whole mental process cha is changing uh, according to conditions, but the awareness of change. Awareness then is not not creating awareness. But recognizing it. And then from there, you know, you begin to break through the basic delusion of a of a separate self, me as a separate person. And all that that implies, you know, the separation is my reality. I'm different from you. This is my seat here. I'm like this, you're that way. I'm senior, you're junior. <laughs> Identities, I could create, you know, create a big ego. I'm, I'm the most senior one here. I can boss the others around if I want. <coughs> you should respect me. I'm the most senior samana here. It's up to you to respect me properly, and you, the lay people. <laughs> you think, God, what a, what a twit that one is. <laughs> but I couldn't, you know, people do this. They use their position to to demand, you know. I'm first, I'm best, I'm this way. And that what is that? That's that's ego, isn't it? Wanting to be right and have authority and be respected is, is desire. Dunha. The awareness of that is like this. It, you know, be aware of, of these uh, 
habits, emotional habits and identities with, uh, with my ego, but that awareness is not an ego. And it's not American British. <laughs> it's conscious, it's like this. And so then more do you you in, you recognize and appreciate now this is something to really appreciate and respect is the awareness. So sape sape tamanada sape means all. Sape all dhamma is anatta, not self. Well, that, that, that's not meant to be a doctrine or some kind of Buddhist belief system. It's a, it's a reflection. All dumb, Now, we're looking at Dhamma rather than uh, Sankara. You know, where we believe this is good, this is right, this is wrong, true and false. We're looking, we're observing from the Buddha position the awareness of the way it is. And then in this way, there's, you know, there's no self, there's no separate entity that has, uh, it's permanent, that has any real essence or permanent essence or substance. It is what it is, and it, you know, and it's changing, so it's like this. Sapetama anatta. So not having a self is really, you know, I found a relief. It's a, having an ego and being limited by one's desires and conditioning is tiresome. It's like a burden. You're always worried about what others think and what's going to happen to me and what if I fail and, and what if I lose my health. Uh, what if, you know, I'm old now, just people will just put me in some some filthy old nursing home and leave me there? <laughs> and I'll become incontinent and, and lose my memory. What's going <laughs> to... These are the things you worry about when you're my age. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you can. <laughs> and in this, in, in this awareness, then is the refuge. And what happens then is, you know, whatever happens to me, to this body, uh, this, this being in the future. You know, I don't asking for. I'm, I no longer want to ask for special privileges or anything, I'll just take what I get. Figure, whatever happens, that's what I'll, you know, being aware is my refuge. So, you know, not demanding anything. You know, I don't, you know, guarantees uh, and that in the future, whatever happens, this is, I'm aware, like using the awareness rather than trying to get <coughs> guarantees and certainty from the society or the people I live with. Because this is a refuge, this is, this is, this is a real refuge, it's liberation to know this, to be this where it isn't to be this person who has a, a, who's getting old. There's all kinds of, you know, uncertainties around that. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me? <laughs> when I'm 64. I'm <laughs> That was one of the Beatles songs. Right? <laughs> <laughs> 